Hello there, this is Mary DeMuth, and this is Pray Every Day, where I pray through the Bible verse by verse. So grateful um, that you are with me today, and uh, really praying that you will know that you are so deeply and wonderfully loved by our Savior. This podcast is brought to you by Pray Every Day, the book. So there is a book now. I'm really excited to share this with you. It's a Harvest House book that I wrote. It's a 90-day devotional taking you through the prayers of Scripture. And um, I will read, if you stay tuned at the end of this particular prayer today, you will um, hear one of the entries from one of the prayers from the books, book of Acts. So stay tuned for that. And um, with that in mind, we're going to go to Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. And this is Paul at Corinth in the New American Standard Version of the Bible, NASB. After these things, he left Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, having recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. He came to them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they were working, for by trade they were tent makers. And he was reasoning in the synagogue every Sabbath and trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. But when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began devoting himself completely to the word, solemnly testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when they resisted and blasphemed, he shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be on your own heads, I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then he left there and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God whose house was next to the synagogue. Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his household, and many of the Corinthians, um, when they heard, were believing and being baptized. And the Lord said to Paul in the night by a vision, Do not be afraid any longer, but go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. And no man will attack you in order to harm you, for I have many people in this city. And he settled there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Mind if I pray for you. Lord, thank you for the fact that Paul had friends. He had people who he had affinity with. And Lord, I pray for the person today listening who just is longing for a friend. I remember that loneliness. Um, I've had it throughout my life at one in time in particular, and I'm pretty sure I prayed it on this show, but I was in the seventh grade and I had no friends and I didn't even know how to pray, but I just longed for a friend and, and one came along. And so I pray that for my friend listening today, that you would send someone their way, a friend. And I pray also for the single people listening today that um, I know a lot of um, folks are longing to be married and Lord, that is a a beautiful desire, and I pray that you would have mercy upon those listening and you would bring a godly person into their lives um, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the way that you do things so lovely. Lord, I know that they need that patient endurance, and I pray that you would just give it to them today. Lord, thank you again for um, Paul's boldness and being able to preach the gospel and how he reasoned with people in the synagogue and how um, that was important to him. Lord, help us also to preach the gospel where we are in our contacts, in our context, and even in our churches, because there are people in our churches who probably don't even know you. So I love that example. Um, Lord, I also love that you led Paul through visions. You were very clear on what you wanted him to be, but you also encouraged him told him not to be afraid any longer. And so I lift up my friend today who's who's living in fear. And I pray, Father, that, um, that they would hear those words spoken over them. Do not be afraid any longer, but go on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. Lord, we need to know that you're with us today. Um, I remember the feeling of landing in Dallas after having been a missionary in France and just struggling and Um, not a lot of folks knowing Christ in the particular region that we left in. And when I landed in Dallas, I had that same feeling that there were many people in this city who loved Jesus. So I understand that feeling of um, kind of that uh, holy let out, you know, of your breath. And, And so, Lord, thank you for just kind of confirming that to me. Uh, Lord, thank you for the person listening today. I just pray for a blessing over them. I pray that you would bless their relationships. I pray that you give them wisdom about who to let in and who to set a boundary around. I pray that you would protect them from the evil one today in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thanks so much for listening to Pray Every Day. Uh, as promised, here is um, something from day 80. This is about Stephen. It's on page 173 of Pray Every Day. And they stoned him. And as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. Acts 7, 59 through 60. Stephen, the deacon who had just shared the entire history of Israel in narrative, culminating in the good news of Jesus Christ, prayed this prayer of surrender. Prior to this utterance, we see something utterly stunning. The Jewish leaders were full of rage, shaking their fists at Stephen, who accused them of murdering Jesus. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God, and he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand, Acts 7, 55-56. Much like the way we rise when a musical uh, performance is powerful, Jesus, who is normally seated at the right hand of the Father, see Luke 22, 69, stands to welcome Stephen to heaven. Stephen endured much hostility with such grace that his welcome resembles an ovation. Lest we stay lost in this beautiful thought, we must look at the second half of Stephen's prayer, where he mimics Jesus' heart. He also asks that God would not charge the Jewish leaders with this sin. Interestingly, Saul, who would later meet Jesus on the road to Damascus, Acts 9, stands right there, Acts 7, 58 and 8, 1. God would beautifully answer Stephen's prayer in Saul turned Paul's life. The one who applauds Stephen's murder would eventually bow before the one who stood at Stephen's homecoming. From the cross, Jesus uttered, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing, Luke 23, 34. Stephen's faith-infused words echo that same sentiment. This reveals that Jesus is not against humanity, but for it, and his mission is to reconcile all men, even enemies of the cross, to himself. Similarly, we can pray that the Lord would receive our lives. We can lay ourselves bare before the one who knows all things. We can joyfully surrender our hearts to the one who fashioned them, and when we suffer at the hands of others, we can ask God not to count their sin against them. This is a faith-filled, godly prayer. It hints at reconciliation, forgiveness, and the power of God to transform even the most hardened person. That Saul turned Paul eventually helped spread the gospel to the entire known world is telling of the power of grace in the life of a believer. This should encourage us to keep praying for those who are lost. If the Apostle Paul, who gloated at Stephen's death, could be transformed, God's power can also change the lives of those we love who are far from Him. Jesus, I surrender. I give you my life. Take it. Do something beautiful from the scraps of my life. Be my strength. I pray for those who are far from you, that you would not hold their sin against them, but forgive them, transforming them into disciples who charge, who change the world. Help me trust that you are able to do such a miracle, God. Amen. All right. Thanks for hanging with me a little bit longer and pray every day is a 90 day devotional. You can get anywhere books are sold. I pray it is a blessing to you and to your prayer life. Have a good day.